I think the most important part of the deal, the package for us, is the fact that developing countries did step up at the plate and took on commitments. Commitments to do more, commitments to do their part, commitments to stop their emissions and accommodate what their needs to the challenges of the climate change and stop global warming. Uh, my name is Mina Ravan from Fence of the Earth International. I actually come from Malaysia. For us today, while even though a deal was struck, it was actually a rather weak deal. It was highly compromised because of very strong arm tactics of some governments, which actually diluted very strong proposals that were there on the table, particularly from the developing countries, which would have moved the planet towards a much better planet and including taking care of the poor. So we have heard about trade sanctions being, the threat of trade sanctions being used. So we are very disappointed that more could have been achieved. But, but we as people fight another day. This is just the first beginning. We continue to pledge support with our alliances out there, with all the movements that we will take the road from Bali to Copenhagen in a much more loud and stronger voice of peoples around the world for a better planet and for, a, for the poor, in defense of the poor, and for climate justice. Good afternoon. My name is Antonio Hill. I'm representing Oxfam International. I'd like to tell you a positive story here that happened. Despite repeated efforts on the part of the United States, Japan, Canada, and other countries, a few of the most vulnerable countries, those that are exposed to the impacts of climate change now, came forward and pushed hard at these talks. They came ready to talk, willing to compromise, and they put forward very clearly their voice. And they were calling for concrete benefits, both in the near term and in the post-2012 period. They were looking for commitments in terms of technology, financing, and adaptation. Adaptation in particular is of great importance to the most vulnerable countries around the world, from Africa, the small island states, and the least developed countries. What was achieved here on adaptation is only a start, but it's a very important start in terms of putting this on the map within the context of the climate negotiations and ensuring that the negotiations that will happen over the next two years put this on par with the efforts that are needed to drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you. My name is Alden Meyer with Union of Concerned Scientists in the United States. What we witnessed today was an incredible drama. I have been following these negotiations for 20 years. I've never seen anything like it. These talks came to the brink of collapse. You all saw it, saw it in real time. There was a brilliant strategy to unite the world to call for my country, the United States, to rejoin the international community in taking on this problem. We saw the reluctance of the United States to do that, but then, after listening to additional interventions from both European and developing countries, my government switched its position, decided to rejoin the conversation. Now the hard work begins, getting the science back into this agreement that had been stripped out, getting meaningful commitments by my country on the table as doing our responsible share of dealing with this urgent problem, and getting the technology, financial, and adaptation resources on the table from my country, from Europe, Japan, the other industrialized countries to keep our share of the global bargain that we just saw struck in real time in that room. My name is Matthias Duba. I'm director of Climate Action Network Europe based in Brussels. The European ministers came here with a mandate from European citizens for a strong additional action on climate change and a strong Bali outcome. They also came with a signal of their willingness to go further than the first targets under the Kyoto Protocol, as agreed by heads of state and governments in March, as a sign of wanting to collaborate. And in that, they showed leadership in forming political coalition here at this conference with countries from the North and the South, and they stood up together against the tactics of the Bush administration delegation here in Bali. Now it's the task of the European Union, together with its partners, to take forward this progressive coalition and together help fill the gaps and the holes and also force the U.S. to re-engage. Good afternoon. My name is Hans Verhoel. I'm the Global Climate Director at WWF. Today you have seen what it means to shine a light on the always murky, intransparent UN process. And we have learned a historic lesson. If you expose to the world 
the, the dealings of the United States, they will ultimately back down. And that lesson we will need to bear in mind for the next two years. We have a long road to go. Difficult negotiations about adaptation, deforestation, technology transfer and deep cuts in emissions so that we can bring clean technology to the entire planet. We will build on Kyoto and in the spirit of cooperation that the developing world has shown here today, we will reach a success in Copenhagen. Thank you. Okay, we're willing to take questions. We'll do three.